What? Look at my hair, man. It's it's perfect. I know someone comment down below like about my hair, but I can show you guys my hair is in the optimal position. I know I didn't just get out of bed, but it looks like it. I promise you I did it. I was awake for like two minutes ago. Okay, so hey, how's it going? My name's Nathan, it's Roll Masters. Roll vacuum right here. Whoa, where is this a new wall vacuum from? Roller Man. <laughs> I like saying that. Roller Man. Such a cool, cool name. Alright, so thanks so much, Roller Man, for sending me out this wall vacuum in exchange for review. And today in this video, we'll do the unboxing. We'll check out the app and we'll also do some challenges like cleanup challenges, shoe challenge. And all that crazy stuff I do here on this channel. So consider liking and subscribing to my channel because I do a lot of cool well, vacuums and other cleaning products. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. This is Nathan and a lot of craziness. Alright, it opens up like this. Whoa! Let's see if it flies. Yep, it flies a million feet up down. Get that out of here. Another doodad. Get out of here. This thing. Ugh. Ugh. Craziness. Instructions. Uh, just a plain instruction manual. Make sure you guys read that. Very, very important. Get out of here. Let's see if it works. I can feel the airflow. That's really cool. It's definitely quiet. I don't know what uh, level it is at. Oh, it has good suction. Look at that, guys. Oh. The current work is stopped. As the robot is picked up, the current work is stopped. Thank you. Alright, so the setup process is very simple. Make sure you put the docking station in the open area so it makes the world vacuum have an easier time finding the docking station. Also, I do recommend charging the world vacuum all the way up. It takes about two to three hours depending on your charge level. Once you do that, go ahead and uh, search Smart Life app in your uh, app store and then you should be able to find it. Once you download and install it, you may have to create an account if you haven't already done so. So don't forget about the mapping process, it's very simple, you have actually a few options on this guy. So the first option is the easiest, all you have to do is just press the sweep button, and the world vacuum will always start to create a map in real time, and it only takes one cleaning run to create a map. But I'm a very impatient person, I don't want to have to wait a couple hours for this thing to map up my entire floor plan, so let me show you a shortcut. Go ahead and press the pause button, and do you see this little pin, kind of looks like a little map pin or something, it's called uh, where to sweep. This is kind of like if you ever use Google Maps, you can actually drop a pin and it will give you the address. But instead of getting the address, the world back will actually physically go there automatically. Now, one thing to know is start the mapping process. You only have to wait about a minute or so, and then you can start dropping a pin down. With this particular model, the robot vacuum will actually start sweeping, so what you have to do is just cancel out the sweeping method. Uh, you'll see this little uh, prompt here, which will pop up on the screen. Just go ahead and cancel and then just continue dropping down your uh, pins to create a larger and larger map until you cover the entire floor plan. I found this method is pretty simple and easy to use once you get the hang of it. It does take some practice, but it usually takes about anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes to map out your entire floor plan. It took me about 10 minutes to map out this uh, 2400 square foot home. So. Another method is the remote control function. In the upper right hand corner, you see this little gear icon, that's your settings. Go ahead and select the settings menu, and then once you go into the settings, you'll see a uh, remote control or manual function. This method is the quickest, it takes about 5 to 10 minutes to map out my floor plan. All you have to do is just drive this row up back into the different areas, and the row up back will automatically create the map. Now, once you're done, just go ahead and select the home button, and the row up back will go back to home. The world of vacuum is fairly quiet. This is on its mute mode or the low power mode. There's also a medium and high power mode. So let's go and uh, hear the differences.
I found that the low and medium power settings are pretty tolerable. You could probably have dinner or watch TV. Now on its max power mode, 2200 pascals, it's a little loud, so you probably don't want to be trying to have a conversation when this is running. So I would give the loudness probably like a 7 out of 10. It's not the most loud robot backing, but it's not the quietest. Okay, so for the side brushes, I actually really like them. I give them a, like a 9 out of 10. They actually did a really good job not scouting the debris around, and they're fairly easy to uh, put on the robot vacuum. And they should just snap right in. Pretty simple. Alright, so this is your standard wheel vacuum. You got your front wheel caster. This actually looks like a pretty small wheel caster. This is smaller than I've usually seen. Also, your dual charging contacts. And it has uh, three clip sensors. Also, you got your adjustable wheels right here. As the robot is picked up, the current work is stopped. As the robot is picked up, the current work is stopped. Don't interrupt me. Alright, so you got your adjustable wheels here. Um, they look a little bit smaller than what I've seen, and also the trays look smaller. So we'll see how well the Roman man does with my uh, rubber mats. On um, here's the extractor bar. Just remove this housing here. And we'll take a look at this extractor bar. Pretty interesting extractor bar. So this is a combination style. Um, one thing I've seen with combination style extractor bars is with the lot of pet hair. Just take a clean tool and just kind of strip away the hair. Um, so they do pick up a lot of hair, but they also get wrapped around. But we'll see how well this extractor bar does. And it looks like I can't remove the ends. So putting the extractor bar in is pretty simple and then you just kind of snap in your cover here. Alright, so the last thing I want to look at is the serviceability. Uh, one thing you can do is remove these two uh, wheels here. It looks like there's just a few screws. So if you ever have issues with your drive wheels, it looks like it's fairly easy. Also, there's a cover held on by two screws. To remove your uh, 3200 milliamp hour battery. So, good job, it's very serviceable. So, for this cleaning challenge, I wanted to add some odd obstacles like the U shaped chair leg in the back there. Also, I put a couple shoes, one with shoe strings and without. I wanted to see how aggressive the world backing was, if it was going to push the shoes around or if it was going to keep them in place. Also, I did a uh, bathroom scale, and off to the left, there's a docking station for my Timmy robot. So, it's an odd shape. We'll see how well the world backing can clean around it. The Roman Man's front bubble did a good job detecting the wire frame of the chair leg. Some more vacuums actually go on top of that U-shaped frame and get stuck because the wheels get lifted off. But luckily the Roman Man's design was able to go around effectively. I do like the dual side brush system because it's able to get the debris from the left and right side. And you notice that the dual side brushes don't really scatter the debris around. So I found that the speed is adequate. Even though they're not like speed sensitive, they did a really good job not scattering the debris. So that's why I give the side brushes a 9 out of 10. Next, we'll have a look at the bathroom scale. Um, some world vacuums actually have a front-facing camera. They can actually recognize it and go around it. But I felt like I prefer the world vacuum to physically bump into the object, but not push the object around, because it allows the side brushes to get near the object and clean around it, instead of just kind of completely avoiding it and missing the areas around the object. Okay, so here's one of the downsides is the side brushes, even though they're really good not scattering the debris around, do kind of suck in the shoestrings. So I highly recommend picking up all power cables and cords where this guy will try to suck them up. Now, on the left side of this side brush, you notice that it kind of got hung up, so the world vacuum will stop, not preventing it uh, to cause damage to the shoestrings or to the robot. Now, all you have to do is just go and gently pull away the shoe from the robot and it should let loose. And then once you're done, just press the clean button and the world vacuum should resume its cleaning job. The warranty guide, uh, let's see, this is a uh, two year warranty, so very, very nice. Data purchase, you get two year warranty. This is probably one of the best warranties I've seen on a world vacuum, so good job. All right, so here's the uh, extra filter. Kind of a standard filter I've seen on most robot vacuums in this price point. So this robot vacuum comes with two extra side brushes, so I could probably use this when I'm sleeping, uh, keep out the light or whatever. So very, very sweet. It has an electronically controlled mopping system. So here's the washable mopping pad, just held on by Velcro, so it makes it really easy to clean up and uh, get going again. Hey, uh, do apologize for my messy kitchen. It wasn't my fault, I promise. Alright, so I probably should remove this sticker here, but I decided to leave it on because I'm lazy. Alright, so we got the roller man here, and here's the mopping system. Now you may notice that it can only back and forth mop, it can't do both simultaneously, but there is like a little cutout here. Um, I don't think dirt goes in there, it's just like a little empty 
stock thing. Alright, so I do recommend blue egg this too to help uh, with the water flow and give it even flow once it's started. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, get this guy going. So I'll just put uh, warm or cold water, still plenty of chemicals in there, or you could damage the mopping system. Open up this plastic lid here, or tap. Fill up with water. Flip back in. Yes, I'm making a mess here. Now let's go ahead and uh, wet the mopping system. Or the pad. Bring it out. See the buckles right there? Just kind of slap it on there. And you're good to go. Okay, so the roll man starts out with a perimeter sweep, like it's vacuuming system, but keep in mind that it doesn't vacuum up at the same time. Also, if you're looking for the carpet voiding sensor, well, it's not on this model, just make sure you do like a keep out zone, and the roll vacuum should be able to void the carpeted area, but I just wanted to test this. Alright, so roll vacuums are kind of like little pets, I know people like to name their roll vacuums, and they do kind of get into mischief, so I decided to let this roll vacuum run, I was out of the room, and what happened was this little guy decided to just give up and uh, let go of his mopping system. System. Yeah, it decided to just drop its mopping system. What the heck, man? Well, I actually found this quite comical. Uh, it was kind of, kind of pushing its mopping pad around. Maybe it wanted to be a Bravo Jet M6 with the mopping pads up front. Anyways, I have had this happen like the Roblox S5 Max and also the Eagle Vax, I believe the 950. So if there's any roll-up vacuum manufacturers watching this video, maybe you should take note. Uh, maybe in future models, add like a magnetic system or a latching system. So it kind of secures the water tank more securely. I know there's some weight to it. And after it's getting dragged along, maybe the vibrations or just the resistance cause it to come loose. Luckily, I was able to uh, reattach the mopping system without having to pause the roll-up vacuum. And there was no damage or anything. It was just kind of a funny laugh there. Not everything goes smooth as butter when I'm filming. And sometimes I find these weird uh, quirks or these weird things that happen. Okay, let's go ahead and speed this up a little bit. And we'll see how well the roller man did with the mopping system. Now, one thing to remember is do a keep out zone. Or you can physically block off the area if you don't want the roll-up vacuum to mop your carpets. Alright, so even though this area was vacuumed like three times in a row because I had to rerun this roll-up vacuum a few times, you notice the dirt and debris. They might have been able to pick up the dirt from your carpets, but these mopping systems do a fair job picking up the light dirt and debris. They're not designed for like heavy mopping duties, but for light dust and stuff, I think they're okay. Okay, so do you remember in the beginning where I added an obstacle challenge? Well, I changed it up a little bit, and we'll see how well the roller man can go back to its docking station. Um, one thing to remember is the LiDAR sensor doesn't pick up the objects in front of it on some roller vacuums, so it has to physically bump into the object to go around it. Here's our power brick for our docking station. Uh, it does look like it supports the 120 volts, so just get your correct plumb adapter and you should be good to go. Alright, so here's the docking station. Uh, it's pretty plain. Um, let's check out this. My favorite sound in the world. Whoa! Oh, that was actually be terrible. It didn't make a sound. I might as well just take this back, get it repackaged, and have it be sent back again, and I can try that again. All right, little man, send me another one. All right, so let's take a look at this uh, docking station here. Pretty nice. Uh, there's a little indicator light, and you know that there's power going to the docking station, but nothing too crazy. Um, I'll see how well these little feet do, if it slides around or not. Downside is you can't wrap the cable around, so uh, make sure you get like a cable tie or something to keep the cord out of the way. Well, what do you guys think? They do a good job going back to this docking station. With these light-up base for our vacuums, they do a good job of being able to find the docking station and navigate around it. So you should have an issue of figuring out where to place your docking station in your home. Here's the robot itself, a very interesting design. Look at how they place the name Roboman, they kind of put it up here. Maybe they should put it right across here because that's a really cool name. Also this little uh, helper right here saying making sure to turn the robot on. Right here there's a physical power switch. Let's go ahead and do that. 
get this little blue indicator, very, very cool. And so here's a look at the design, uh, very, very cool. Has a nice little silver uh, accent up here. Also, I like the domey thing because this thing is pressure sensitive. And underneath the little domey thing is the lighter sensor, which can map out your area. Also, can do room select, area select, and keep out zones. So this is interesting. This just has a single button. So you press it once to uh, start a cleaning job, press again to stop. Um, I think if you hold it down, the robot actually shuts down. Let's try that. Oh, interesting. So if you hold it down, it actually connects to the network. Spin around the robot. Pretty uh, minimalistic design, nothing too crazy. And I don't know if it has a daycare wall sensor, so we'll see how well uh, these dual side brushes do. Hopefully they slow down in open areas and it's beat up in uh, the edges and stuff. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, check out the wheel of the robot. So here's the uh, dustbin. Uh, pretty uh, decent size. I believe it's probably around four or 500 milliliters. And to empty out, it's just kind of open up from here. And you can just empty out your contents. I do like it has like a little flap here, so it doesn't uh, spill out your contents. And there's a uh, filter right here. So nothing too crazy about this dustbin. It's not the largest, but it's not the smallest I've seen. And it should just slot back right in here. All right, let's go and wrap up this video. I'll kind of tell you who this wheel of vacuum is for. It's not for everyone. If you're the type of person that has a larger floor plan, maybe 2,000 square feet or more, you will benefit from the LiDAR navigation because it does have good navigation. Also has that systematic cleaning pad, so it can cover a large area uh, fairly quickly. Also, with the LiDAR navigation, you can navigate in complete darkness, so you don't have to worry about having your lights on that may be down in the basement. I found that the mapping is fairly basic, you get like area select and it's like with any other mapping where you can draw a rectangle or a square using the little handles. You also have uh, keep out zones as well. The keep out zones are very similar to like the area select where you can draw a rectangle or a square. Hopefully down the road, Roman can add some software updates to increase the functionality of the map. Maybe be able to have multiple map support, being able to save some maps. Hopefully down the road, you'll be able to create rooms and label those rooms. I know some people like to customize their maps. If you're the type of person that wants every bells and whistles in the world of vacuum well, sadly the world of man probably won't satisfy your needs. This world of vacuum is designed for a simple, easy to use operation, and you can probably tell from the single button design, it's probably one of the simplest designs I've seen on a world of vacuum. The app itself is pretty simple, uh, up top there is the ability to change the name of your robot, you also have a settings icon, up to right there is the ability to add the keep out zones, and then you got your large live map there, at the bottom there it gives you the area, it's cleaned, also the time, it's clean, and you also have the battery percentage. Now down below is your sweeping, it tells the robot vacuum to go out and clean, you also have the pin to go function, and you got your area select, and then you can tell the robot vacuum to return back to your home. In the settings it's pretty simple, you got your manual control for your remote control, you can reset the map in case the map gets screwed up or if you have to take it to a different level. Also record allows you to keep track of the consumable life, so you do have to change out the extractables, side brushes, and filters every 3-6 to six months. Also the timers like your scheduling, you got the adhesion which is basically the vacuum section, and your water tank record regulation is the uh, water flow. So that's basically the overview of the app integration, pretty simple. Alright, now let's see how much this raw vacuum picked up. Well, what do you guys think of the raw man? Not a bad raw vacuum, it's pretty simple, but it does offer all the core functionalities that most people want in a raw vacuum. Alright, so you guys have a great rest of the day, I hope you guys are safe out there, I'll see you guys next time, and stay tuned because I do got a lot of new raw vacuums on this channel, and new products, so uh, I try to change it up as much as I can, so yeah, see you later.